Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, yeah, sorry I've not been active for a few months now, like three months I guess it is. But uh, I've had uh, my exams about halfway through them now. I've got a week off just to uh, keep on with the revision. But uh, in between them all, I've been roughly working on uh, some some projects on the go. The watch is still on the go. Uh, that's definitely going to be finished soon. And I've also started a new project, which is really exciting. So let's go over to the computer and take a look at what uh, what's going on. So the project is a pick and place machine, and this is just one of the little parts of it. So uh, this is actually a, a, a mount for an 8mm bar. Uh, it's the Y mount, so there'll be four of these, one at each end of the uh, the bar, and then there'll be two bars, so four. And then these will be screwed down to uh, a kitchen door. So it's uh, as you can guess, it's a pretty cheap project. That's the whole idea of having the 3D printer. You can just knock stuff out for fairly cheap. I don't need to buy these brackets or anything like that. So uh, that's one of the parts, and they're printed. So let's take a look at that. Uh, that's here. So as you can see, we've got four of those kitchen door. Um, yeah, and that's just giving me a rough idea of how it's going to go. I've been messing around with some mic switches, which are going to mount on the posts, and then there's going to be an axle at the back here that turns and then that will drive two belts along here and here that will move these linear bearings uh, in tandem so only one motor will need to drive it um, there's some more CAD as well, let's get that up so now we'll look at the motor block dun 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 sweet so let's just get rid of that one so this is a motor block. So if you look at this, the uh, motor is going to go in that slot there and bolt down into there. These will be NEMA, like one of the NEMA models anyway, the 48 mil length ones, uh, five, five. Uh, kilograms per centimeter of torque I think something like that so that means if you've got a five kilogram weight a centimeter along the uh, hanging off the spindle by a centimeter it would just uh, begin to stall and then that also is proportional to uh, meters as well so you could mean that would mean that uh, you could have half a kilogram hanging one meter off of it and it would still well it would just be on the edge of stalling so if we look at this here that Y bar is going to slide through there so there'll be two linear bearings, one on each side of that there, and that will mean that this, so that is, these two linear bearings will be inside of that and they'll slide along here, and then there'll be two poles going across which the head sits on, and if we look at the uh, other block that goes on the opposite side, that's just plain, so that's this here, that goes on the opposite side, uh, over here and then same linear bearings and then that will ha have the belt attached to it and will all move and then there'll be a belt going across the top which that motor bracket uh, pulls well the motor in the bracket pulls the belt and that will move ahead which I haven't designed along uh, two bars here so a lot of parts are still on the way uh, I've already started thinking about the head design so that's the most important part your vacuum so the way a pick and place machine works sorry is you have a, a needle, I'm just going to use a football pump adapter for the first one with uh, some SMD vacuum heads on it, these little black suc suc suction cups. So you have a worm drive and normally you just have your Z axis on the needle because it's a lot more efficient at moving the whole Z axis up and down. And this this is literally going to just have a vacuum pipe to it and a rotary motor and that's it. So this is going to be lifted up and down, probably not by that much, only by like 30 millimeters up and down and the, the idea is that the more heads you have the more parts you can pick up so the essence of a pick and place machine is you pick up a component from a tray or a belt then you place it on a circuit board and then that circuit board is then put in what's called a reflow oven where the solder is then cooked and the uh, board will then work just like how they do it in industry with the uh, SMD components only through hole is a little bit different where it's, it's dragged through a uh, tray of solder and all the the legs pick up solder, um, which is a lot harder to make and it's not as it's not as quick. And uh, through hole soldering is becoming something of the past now because it's not as efficient. So yeah, uh, the head design. Oh yeah, here's my 3D printer. I've not done anything on it for a little while because I the threads went in my head. So 
uh, the parts on the way to get it back and working again. So this is the uh, first head design. That uh, the idea is that there are six nozzles because the more nozzles you have, the more parts you can pick up at once. And I know it's quite ambiguous for a first machine to have six nozzles, but uh, this actually works. So turn it on. You can see that this motor here is turning. None of the others are wired up, but these motors, I didn't realize how geared they were, and uh, literally, these are all just bolt bolted together in a nice pattern, so I thought these could be perfect for it, you have a rotary drive in the middle that can bite into whichever one of these at once, and then it can turn it to adjust the orientation of the component, but you know, I didn't realize how, um, how bad these were, they turned so slowly with not even a lot of torque, so I've gone for floppy drives now. Uh, floppy step motors, uh, they're bipolar, these are unipolar, and these ones are bipolar, so they're a bit harder to drive, because you don't have that center tap like in a unipolar motor. So with a unipolar motor like these, you have a center tap that's 12 volts, or 5 volts, or whatever, and then on each side of that center tap is the end of the coil, so you'll have a coil with a center tap, and you have a positive voltage in the center tap, and then you ground either side of the coil to change which way the uh, mag the coil is uh, magnetized and you have two coils and then it, so you basically don't need to have a whole H-bridge circuit you can just ground different ends of the coil to produce different magnetic fields with this though you only have two ends to the coil like um, you don't have the center tap so you need to reverse the uh, polarity of each wire at any time and you can't just do that straight out with IO because there's not enough uh, power there these are going to use about 200 milliamps and uh, your standard Atmel chips are only rated for 40 milliamps on the lines, so I've got this little dual H bridge here. One of the wires is broken, but these are much quicker. They're designed to move the floppy head, and you can buy them on carriages as well. So there'll be a lot less work to do there. But yeah, the whole idea of this, though, is to make circuit boards. So we've just got the kitchen door here, and the, the heads will be moved along here. They'll pick up components, just taped down to the board. And then they'll pick them up with a vacuum pump, move them along, move them back, drop them down. And they'll just keep doing that and keep doing that. So that's basically what's going on at the minute. I'm sure this, I'm sorry that this has been a really uh, quick and just quick video, just to keep you all updated on what's going on. The watch is still going on in the background. I've actually got a new uh, parts tray for making them, uh, just by hand, so I can just get to all the components quickly. Um, I've started putting together another one as well in the case, so that's pretty nice, nice blue case there, I printed that not too long ago, um, but yeah, the watch is, I really want to get it finished, it's going to be so cool when it's done, and another exciting thing is I've actually been experimenting with ARM processors in the watch to uh, try and get it running at high frame rates, and I've had it playing some really awesome like uh, animations on the little OLED screen. And I don't have time to get that all set up at the minute, but uh, after exams, my last one's uh, June, the, like mid-June I'll probably be posting a lot of videos about what's going on here, and I really cannot get what, cannot wait to get into my holiday and just get started on this, and all the parts will be here by then, they're all on order now, should be here in a few days, so yeah, it's going to be so exciting, uh, and you should definitely watch this video series if you're into SMD pick and place, and doing it for the cheap though this is my budget's like 300 pounds for the whole machine and along with the help of my 3d printer to make it should be really excellent uh, yeah so I'd really appreciate if you subscribe and just follow along it'd be be excellent it's gonna be really cool anyway I'll see you in a few weeks then with the start of the series this is just a quick quick taster of what it's gonna all be like see you then